Hey everybody, faith segment for your Friday and weekend, hopefully to give you some inspiration and motivation um, for the weekend. And I had talked about last week doing a study on comparison. And so that's what we're going to do today. Comparison Trap by Sandra Stanley. Um, I believe this is something that a lot of women struggle with. I don't think it's something that we talk about, but I do think it's something that we struggle with. And I asked my husband's opinion to get a man's perspective. Is it something that men typically struggle with? And when he said is that they do but kind of the things that we struggle with right out of the gate that is kind of further down on the list and I would say from some of the conversations that I've had that body image is most definitely one of the things that women you know start into that comparison trap with so one of the things that Sandra talked about is that comparison tricks us into thinking that God's blessings are in limited supply. And the antidote for that is to trust his timing. Now, the scripture that kind of goes along with that is 1 Corinthians 2, 9, which I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So we really don't know what all God has in store for us. And that's where trust comes in. And God isn't limited. So looking at other people and thinking his you know blessings for them we don't get the same thing and there's not going to be enough to go around is just kind of foolish for lack of a better word because as humans we are limited and we do have bounds but God does not so trusting and just believing that he's going to bless us in and how he wants and how he blesses others is is their business is a big part of the antidote for that. The second thing she talked about was to be cautious from taking cues from those around you, you know, looking left and looking right and seeing how we measure up. And what goes along with that is 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 7, which says godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we will nothing we will carry nothing out of it now that's most definitely true you came in with nothing and when you go out you may leave a lot behind but you're not taking it with you so one of the things that I, I think about with this is not just caution in and looking to the left and looking to the right and getting into that comparison mess but who are we allowing to speak into our lives you know are they gossiping are they critical um, or are they positive are they building other people up or are they tearing them down and are they building you up or are they tearing you down so I think that's part of it now one of the things that she was talking about is that when we start that comparison when we start to look at other people and other things we either fall short of somebody meaning they have more than us or this is better than us or whatever as a result of that we become envious and jealous okay and or we can we come ahead we look at, at people and we think well, we're better off than them in this area and oh I'm, I'm doing better here and we get prideful and arrogant to the point where you know we almost tend to celebrate somebody else's difficulties that's not spoken out loud typically but it may be a confession of your heart either way again know when you the result is discontentment you're not content in your own situation and in your own right with who you are and who God made you to be so here's your action steps and your challenges for hopefully if this is something that you struggle with helping you to overcome this so the first one is to catch yourself catch yourself comparing and I would encourage you to read Psalm 86 I read it this morning it's, it's actually a very good psalm to read for a lot of this stuff so you have to catch yourself comparing yourself to other people now I have the benefit of having a girlfriend um, that never really struggled with this she was just somebody who had a lot of godly confidence she was not arrogant or prideful but she had a lot of godly confidence and she was comfortable with who she is um, and so much so that it made me want it because this is something that I struggle with and so being around her watching how she navigates life and not getting caught up in this whirlwind um, encouraged me that if she can have it I can be healed from it too and part of that is being sensitive to when you are comparing yourself to somebody number two is going to be gratitude gratitude is a perspective adjustment as soon as we can start being thankful for what we have and and the things that we are able to do every day it totally changes our attitude and our focus the third is I wish I had blank okay this is where again you're being intentional you're catching yourself and these kinds of things 
we say without even thinking about it, oh, I wish I was like this. Oh, I wish I had that. Oh, I wish this were better or this were, you know, we, we catch ourselves saying what we want to be, even though it may not be that way now. And that is an opportunity right off the bat to pray about it and to pray, if, especially if you're comparing yourself to somebody else, to pray for that other person. Fourth is to be intentionally about complimenting others. As women, ladies, we really need to build each other up. We need to be each other's cheerleaders. Instead of wanting what somebody else has or being envious of, of, of the gifts and talents that other people have, we really need to come alongside and celebrate one another. And I think a big part of that comes from respecting that somebody else is gifted in a particular area and then saying so complimenting them, bragging about them to somebody else when they're not even not even around and may never ever know that you did it. But coming alongside and, and, and helping each other, encouraging each other, and being proud of each other. We need to be proud of each other's gifts and talents and abilities and accomplishments and not envious and jealous, but proud because we help represent the sex, right? Our sex, which is female. Lastly is to embrace the change in yourself. And on this, I wanna say, I would highly encourage you if you wanna do some extra home this work this week to go to the Southridge Church website and listen to Dean Brennan's message. Um, I think it was August the 25th would be the date of it. And he gives a real life example, and that's one of the ways I learned. He gives a real life example of something that happened to him or that he went through that he then turned around to a biblical lesson and it just clicked for me. And one of the things that he said was that we need to be dissatisfied with being comfortable and being routine in our life. That can't be enough. We, it has to be not enough for us to be comfortable all the time and, and safe and calm. We need to get out of that comfort zone and challenge ourselves and invite change into our life because it's work, right? It's work to embrace change. It's work to recognize our weaknesses and then do something about it. So here's the scriptures I'm leaving you with for this. Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And then Romans 12, 6, which is having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. And so this is again, recognizing where everything comes from, who gives it, and they're different, right? Everybody's gifts are different. Everybody has, some people have one, some people have a hundred, and it's God's, you know, his decision on who he gives, how, how much, how often, and when. And we need to trust that. We need to be obedient, and we need to be willing to bless. Use our gifts to bless other people, and then let them use their gifts to bless and just keep spreading it around instead of wishing we had somebody else's gifts. Let's work to be content with who we are and where we are and what God's given us. So I hope this encourages you for the weekend. Get into the scriptures and read it yourself. I would encourage you to research um, Sandra Stanley on the YouVersion Bible app and see if you can't do the whole study yourself on there. It was, a really, it was really good. It was very encouraging. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend.